Alright guys, welcome back to another video. So in this project, we're going to be building a king size bed out of walnut and white oak. Now this bed is an add-on to the bedroom set that you may have seen me build a little while back here. So the idea here with this bed is that it's supposed to be the complete inverse of that bedroom set. So where on the bedroom set, all the furniture is primarily made out of white oak with some walnut panels on it. This bed is made primarily out of walnut with a whole bunch of book matched white oak panels floating in it. So this project, as you can see, is all built using a quarter stock. Now, this, the hardest thing about this project was just the sheer scale of everything. So dealing with all this eight quarter stock and these just generally large pieces was really the only challenging thing about it. And you guys will see that more as we go through this project. Like I said, these floating panels are going to be made out of book matched white oak. So I had to go through with these massive pieces of eight quarter white oak, start by just breaking them down into something that was a bit of a more manageable size. Now the trick is here, I want to make sure that the grain is running all the way across the headboard and the footboard, but I also want each of these individual pieces to be book matched. So that means that I have to make sure I keep all these pieces in order, and eventually when I split these all in the bandsaw, I have to try and keep that book match across all six of these pieces, or 12 if you count both the headboard and footboard. So this was definitely a daunting challenge and it came out looking awesome in the end, but yeah, right at this stage of the, of the project, I was terrified that I wasn't going to be able to actually make this work out. Now the reselling portion of this project was absolutely mortifying. Uh, on the, if you watch the detailed build series, you can actually see that I ended up popping the breaker on my bandsaw because I jammed these, some of these pieces on the blade, which then popped the breaker. So this was one of the most challenging things I've ever done, and I'm glad to say that I don't plan to do it again in the future, but it was, it was definitely something that I find very worthwhile in the finished product. And you can see here just how that grain flows and we've got a book match across all of our pieces. The next part of this product that I decided to work on was the side rails. Now, what's special about these side rails is that these pieces of walnut you're seeing moving around right now are about 12 and a half inches wide. Our finished side rails are going to be kept solid at 12 inches wide, which was, again, a very daunting task. This whole bed frame was crazy outside of my skill set, but all it took was a little bit of perseverance to, you know, and mostly just messing around to figure out how to get this stuff built up. So like I said, we're going to be keeping these pieces solid, which means I had to basically use the hand plane on both the edges to clean them up and get them mostly squared. Then I had to use this custom sized router jig to, in order to hold these long pieces. And so all the router slot is doing is just flattening one side. Then once I had one side flattened on both, I could then use the router as a planer, so like a thickness or whatever you want to call it. Uh, because then when you put that nice flat face down on the router sled, you then get that perfectly flat reference surface. And as long as you're very controlled with what you're doing with the router, you can get these pieces to the exact same thickness. Then all I had to do from there was just trim off the sides and just try to square these up as best as I possibly could. Again, if you go back to the detailed build series, you'll find out that this was a very challenging thing to do, just trying to get these pieces nice and squared up, and took a long time, but in the end, it wasn't actually as hard as I was expecting it to be.
and these side rails are going to be connected to the headboard and footboard using two tenons as well as a one single bolt going right in the middle. So here you can just see me isolating the tenon material using the router. This is what I figured would work out the best. You could do it with hand tools, I think would be another good option, but the, the router made quick work of it. And then much like cutting breadboard ends or any other kind of mortise and tenon joinery in a large piece, uh, everything else was done with hand tools. Now, order of operations in a project like this is extremely important. You know, you've kind of already seen it come up in the video, but we started by rough milling all our pieces so that they had a, a, had some time to, you know, move and do that kind of thing before I finally milled them. Then we moved on to our white oak panels so that they're ready to go once we're all ready to go with our headboard and footboard. Then we had to move on to the side rails because the side rails, we need to have all the joinery on them done and them ready to go before we can actually glue up and put together our headboard and footboard. Because if you think about it, trying to transfer those mortise and tenon joints from the side rails onto the headboard and footboard when they're fully glued up would be nearly impossible. Whereas when we just have individual small pieces, you can see just how easy it actually is. With the mortise and tenon part all fit up, we now can move on to adding in our bolts. Now you can buy specific bed bolts from Lee Valley, Horton Brasses, wherever, but for this project I wanted to use something that was a little bit more generic. So I just picked up some, I believe they were half inch bolts from Lowe's, and they worked out beautifully. They were a very, very strong connection, absolutely solid. Uh, the only trick here is that the bolt hole was a little bit on the large side, so we had to cover that up uh, at the end there pretty with a pretty big plug. But overall, again, I, I wouldn't do this in any, any other way. Uh, these bolts were, again, extremely strong and super easy to fit in, so it worked out really well in the end. With our side rails all fit up, now we can move on to actually assembling the headboard and the footboard. So it starts out by just finish milling all these pieces. So because we did that initial rough milling, there wasn't a whole lot of work to do on them. So it was a pretty quick milling session. But then the important part was just figuring out, you know, which pieces were going to go where, what orientation. Because it's really important when you think about a bed frame, there are certain areas that are never going to be seen and certain areas that are going to be seen a lot. Like the front face of your footboard is going to be seen constantly. But the back side of your headboard or the, even the bottom bar of the headboard is probably never going to be seen again. So, especially when you're dealing with a wood like walnut, this is a perfect opportunity to hide some of your sapwood in areas where it's going to be nearly invisible or rarely seen. So that's one of the biggest things to consider here is whatever wood you're working with, take the time to lay out your pieces, figure out where you want them to be, that way any of your potential defects in any of your pieces are pretty easy to hide. And for all these pieces, we're using just simple mortise and tenon joinery. So we're cutting all of this with the router. Uh, I've talked about this a lot in the past. Uh, router is one of the best tools for doing mortise and tenon joinery in the beginning. Uh, before you ever buy a mortise or anything like that, make sure you have a router because not only can it cut tenons and all that, it lets you work in basically any size of piece. You know, you don't need a table saw, you don't need a mortise reader. You really just need a router if you want to get into doing mortise and tenon joinery.
one of the most stressful parts about building a bed frame is this first time you put it together because at this point you don't know if you missed an inch somewhere you screwed up a measurement of some kind uh, because this is when you find out if all of your parts have come out to the right size and whether or not you can actually fit a king size mattress in this frame. And yes, in case you're wondering, this project got very heavy, very fast. Every, every single one of these components was backbreakingly heavy. With all of our frames together, it was now time to move on to the detail work. Now, this is some of the funnest stuff you get to do in woodworking because you get to take these, you know, what are basically just flat pieces and go in and add, you know, your, your edge detailing and whatever, you know, small details. So for this project, initially what I'd planned was to just make everything flat, you know, it, it didn't need to be anything super complex. But as I worked on it, I decided to go for this awesome step design that I've used in a lot of my other projects. So on the outer legs, we have a 1 8 round over on all the edges. Then I brought down both the top rails of the headboard and footboard. I brought them down to be just under that uh, 1 8 round over. And this created just a very subtle depth difference. Again, it's nothing, it's one of those things that doesn't make a massive difference to the project, but it makes a very, very subtle touch that is definitely noticeable uh, to people that even aren't word workers. You know, my, the customer that I was gave this bed to, they picked up on it right away and thought it looked great. And so to, in order to do that, rather than changing the thickness of the entire board, I just went through and adjusted the very end of it so that it went just under that one inch round over. What this also did is created a slight curve to the long stretchers on both the headboard and the footboard, which again is a very, very subtle detail, but one that I think is really nice when you do pick up on it. For the glue on this project, I decided to use hide glue. Because of just the sheer scale and mostly the cost of everything in this project, I figured that if you know one of the white oak panels cracked or if something on this project had an issue in the future, at least if I use hide glue, I can. there's a chance that I can get those joints apart and I can repair whatever is broken or damaged. If you've never worked with hide glue before, I highly recommend it. It makes glue ups a lot less stressful because it has a really long open time. It's just pretty easy to work with. Then finally we could move on to the side rails. So at this point in time these were just big slabs of wood, but they also needed that same step design brought into them. So the ends of them needed to be taken down by about an eighth of an inch and tapered up slightly. So again this brought in that, that minor curve to the, that outside face and again made a massive just beautiful difference to the board. Now this was a lot of work and there probably was an easy way to do it, but I found that the hand plane, it seemed anyway at the time, like the most efficient way to do it. And then we're bringing in the same three quarter inch round overs onto the side rails to just give them a nice soft look. Because that's, that's the biggest thing on a bed frame is you don't want any sharp corners. You want everything to be soft and smooth. The final part here was to make some plugs for those bolt holes. We only need to make two of them because we only have to cover up the ones on the footboard. The ones that are on the headboard you're never going to see anyway. Uh, so all these plugs are is just a round piece of walnut that's jammed in the hole. Then there's a small hole drilled in that piece that can actually be used to pry it out. Now the whole point of this is just to cover up the, the head of that bolt. When it 
came to finishing a project like this, I knew it was going to be easier if I just put it all together and had it freestanding. Because the chances of, you know, if you finish one side of the headboard and try to flip it over to finish the other side, the chances of you scratching or damaging something was just very, very high because of just how heavy everything was. So by just assembling the bed in my shop, I was able to put a good coat of tread and chew varnish oil on this, so it was looking its absolute best. So if you guys enjoyed this project, make sure you go check out the detailed build series. There'll be a link to it in the card above as well as in the description. But as always, guys, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one.